if linear valve shocks are the way to go on a race truck or dedicated off-road rig and certainly are situationally more comfortable than a digressive shock then why are digressive dampers so popular when it comes to bolt-on suspension solutions? Well, it's because factory-based vehicles are kind of hot garbage. So let's talk about it. Essentially, most auto manufacturers have to make at least some compromises in terms of geometry and even componentry to tick all the boxes of the needs of your average consumer while also having something that at least works. The closer your roll center and center of gravity are, the less prone the vehicle is going to be to sway brake dive and even squat under throttle but oftentimes packaging constraints limit brands abilities to be able to tighten up those geometries so there's nothing you can do but accept some sway additionally anti-squat and anti-dive geometries on most vehicles are already about as extreme as they can get without further limiting travel and having more bind as well as having some wonky handling characteristics with the lackluster dampers most of these vehicles come factory with additionally they are ultimately limited on how stiff of sway bars they can use on most vehicles because they will limit independent wheel movement, which not only is going to limit articulation, something we don't want off-road, but also it can hamper ride quality a good bit. Suffice it to say, factory-based vehicles are inherently flawed in the handling and stability departments, and well, things only get exponentially worse as you add height and mass sprung or otherwise. In the absence of a low-speed compression or rebound-specific adjuster, or two- or four-way adjusters on a set of shocks, it becomes difficult on a linear valve damper to tune inadequate low speed characteristics without bringing up the whole curve. Additionally, there is a chance you might even need stiffer springs than stock to improve those handling characteristics at all. In both cases, that's going to net you a stiffer ride, and in the case of those springs, it might limit articulation as well. A digressively valve damper just on basic design naturally has much higher damping force characteristics in the low speed half of the curve, the handling half, while bleeding off damping force or stiffness in the high speed half of the curve, or where you're getting your bump stiffness. They also allow for lower spring rates in many cases. So although you might sacrifice some small bump compliance, particularly at lower speeds, that lighter high speed compression valving and lower spring rate may just net you a little better ride while still having better handling and potentially better articulation on those applications that really really suffer when it comes to geometry now obviously shocks like a fox an icon cdxs bill stein 8112 and 8100 dsa pluses dobinson mrrs rad flows and ads mbr series shocks that have at least one low speed specific adjuster are the way to go because you can probably get an acceptable handling balance and amount of stability with less compromise to small bump compliance and overall comfort. But for everybody else who doesn't want to spend that much money on that much shock, the compromises made by a digressively valved damper are often more than outweighed by their benefits. And brother, if they feel stiff, just drive a little faster.